Hello, everybody. We're back. It's Truth or Skepticism. I'm Tom Sosnoff. I'm here with Dylan Radigan. Looking forward to today's session. Mr. Radigan, how are you? I'm a bit preoccupied. I, 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 even though I have, there's a many a young person, people, friends of mine, lots of, I'm at, of the age where there's most many a, a peer who has many a offspring. And so you have a lot of visibility into the culture of, let's say, the sort of one month old to the 25 year old, let's say. I don't see you having a lot of visibility into the one month old. <laughs> I know I do I, because I have old, old friends my age who are having babies for the first time. A lot of 50 year old dads out there, Tom. There, there are. And all of a sudden it happened. It's been happening. It happens all over. It's, like it's like all over town. That's true. And so, you know, it's, it comes back, you know, it happens in your 25. And then again, round two, um, diff, the round two, though, the screen is in there. And even the most vigilant parent is not, uh, you know, you can't fight the screen. No one can beat the screen. And now there's news today, Meta, which is a gajillion dollar empire, screen empire, screen king, right? Along with a handful of others, says they're going to make rules because they're like, oh, we know it's addictive. Like on the one hand, everybody's like, yes, we're going to engineer this to be perfectly manipulative of brain chemistry with the smartest people from Stanford and MIT for decades, just looking to run dopamine cycles on brain chemistry at Stanford until they optimize the sequence of the journey of the optic nerve through the triggers of the sensory nervous system like a monkey. And then at the same time, they're like, oh, no, it's no problem. But then you look at it one, you know, and now all of a sudden Meta's going to come out. The same people that gave you the super, super, you know, digital, uh, super, super, super uh, drug. Now they're going to control it. And, and I just, you know, not to go all like Nancy Reagan on you, but like, I think it's a problem. And I think I think we need to I think we need to deal with the screen situation or I think we have a problem more than political or anything else. Not to go all Nancy Reagan. What's the Reagan? <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm I just wasn't saying sure like, if you were going to go Nancy, Nancy or Reagan. Or Al Gore's Nancy, wife. Remember Nancy Al Gore's Grace, wife? Nancy Mace. Like, I wasn't sure where, what Nancy you're going. No, you Nancy Reagan. It's, the, it's like, because they have a salad. They name a salad after her in, in New York. And in, 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 there's a good, like, like a Nancy Reagan chopped salad still on the menu. I have never heard city. that in my entire life. Yeah, well, you know, that's why it's good. You keep showing up every day. New, new thing. We'll get you. <laughs> Next time you're in California, I'll take you for a Nancy Reagan chopped. But again, I, I don't mean to go all like moralistic. I don't know where thing. I would go for a Nancy Reagan chopped salad. Oh, yeah, I could take you three places. You need <laughs> to hang out with. <laughs> oh, my God. I must have had a sheltered childhood. I don't know where this Nancy Reagan chopped salad is, but. It's it's good. I didn't know Nancy Reagan was good at making chopped salads. I heard Nancy Reagan was good at one thing, but we can't talk about that on air. You heard things, though? Who, where'd you hear that? Nancy Reagan? Yeah, where'd you hear things about Nancy Reagan? Oh, my God, she's a legend in Hollywood. From who? On the, uh, just from the gossip circles? From the Oh, from no, no, no. Day. She's a Hollywood legend. She's legit a Hollywood legend. You can read all about her. We don't have it's to have a discussion on it. Publicly available. This it's publicly Google. available. Yes, it's Enjoy all publicly yourself. available. She was the well, queen I, of something, and and you can uh, you can Google it if you want to. Well, I can tell you right now, she would be telling everybody to just say no to their screens. <laughs> she didn't. Outside. She didn't say just say no to that many people before that. Hey, <laughs> so. hey, hey! Listen, let's. This is people have this. The, we need. To, let's not speak ill of the those who have gone. Whatever. Before. Yeah. No. No harm. The no foul. Screen's a problem, Tom. And I, don't, and I hear you don't care. I hear you disagree. And I'd like to understand why you think rampant screenery, if I'm not putting words in your mouth, is tolerable, if not beneficial. Um, first of all, I, I, I have a hard time deciding, like, you know, how much... Per, I, I remember years ago, we used to say, you know... Kids should not have access to the internet without parental controls. You know, 
the the limitation. Well, we, when I was a kid, there were limited hours to watch television. There were no screen. The only screen was you had an hour of TV on whatever. You yeah, know? my my parents, my dad used to have a half hour rule in my house. You could watch a half hour of TV. Otherwise, you're going to go. It's going to fry your brain. <laughs> That's I'll it. throw that TV in the garbage right now. Nobody has those Turn rules off. anymore. You know, like it's go outside and you get a half hour of TV per day if you're lucky, and you can't save it up. It's not something you can. You you you. You can't you you can't bundle this. There's no three hours super zombie session on the screen. That's right. So I I just think we we society in general. Um, I I just don't feel it's fair to box in social media is a very difficult. Um, it is very difficult to start putting rules and fences around. You know, like everybody wants to have um, because of the who decides, because of the who decides problem. Oh, who you're, you're saying once I do rules, you introduce governance and who decides, which is only only makes it worse, basically. And because I don't know if social media is any worse than what we call traditional media. In terms of net, the screen time. So, in other words, you're saying my discussion of screen time is a is a different, related but different than a discussion of regulating. Yeah, now. I would probably make the argument that Fox News has done more damage to this country than than Facebook will ever do to the future of this country. That's just my opinion. I mean, it doesn't don't don't write don't. But does it? But it might, my point me. is that is that separate from your point of view on screen time? As an issue, that's why that's why I don't I don't care what they I don't care what what happens on on one side and I don't care what happens on the other. No, it's not separate because I, I that's what I'm trying to say is I I don't want to play I don't want to play the role of of enforcer Nancy God Reagan, whatever it is. We're calling her Nancy Reagan for this discussion. Call Nancy whoever you want to call. I think Nancy, Nancy Grace was the prosecutor. Nancy. Call her. We'll, we'll call her to say Nancy. Yeah. Nancy's not in charge. Yeah, um, you know. I think you go down a very difficult rabbit hole when you start to blame Facebook or somebody else. You know, years ago it was, wasn't it, you know, three years ago it was TikTok. Now you don't hear anything about it because everybody realizes, okay, you know what? It's really good. <laughs> you know, I don't know what else to say. Like, I, it, it bothers me that that's, that that's a topic. How, how can a political candidate i'm not being specific to any one candidate but how can how can a candidate xyz whoever it is in any race could be for senate it could be for governor it could be for congress it could be for president whatever it is go out and tell 8000 lies and that not be a problem in this country but but some hang on, kid, hang on. You're talking about that guy from Long Island. You just claimed that you whatever. were talking about it. Talk about some guy yeah, from no, Long Island. No. Sure. Right. Sure. So you're talking about a party boy from Long Island. Fine. That's whatever you want to talk about. Fine. Party boy from Long Island. Out. My point right. is, we don't have an issue with that. But we, for some reason, we have an issue with something that somebody doesn't think their kids should be watching or reading or whatever. You know what? Take a hike. Yeah. Take a hike. Should my parents have taken me to see, like, I forgot what, okay. play, what play it was, where hair, where everybody gets naked when I was 12 years old. You know, <laughs> I don't know. Didn't ruin my so, life. So, <laughs> listen. I'm just saying. So, that, I know, but that you're talking, listen, but you want to talk about censorship, we're going to agree. But I'm talking about the use of technology to manipulate attention to the screen from real life, which is a, a different accusation. So we're, we're talking about who can watch which content, which channel, who curates it. Come on, leave us alone. You can't, no one, no one wants to go exactly. to the side. Exactly. Right? So, but that's a different issue than technological manipulation of dopamine flow through gamification and reward mechanisms inside the primitive understandings of the psyche of the human being as programmed through the Stanford laboratories to absorb hundreds of hours into screen time and away from other forms of engagement. In other words, I think that the content is secondary. The content supports whatever that dopamine hitting rabbit 
trap they've set up is. It's a very TikTok difficult. Or I, Fox, I, it doesn't matter. I find it incredibly difficult to separate. Incredibly difficult to 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 determine, you know, what is dopamine. No, of course. That's why they go to Stanford. That's why they don't ask you. Okay, like they're looking. The, 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 but they, my point is, the design are the people who get the job to design the thing, which is not you or me. They do know the answer to those questions. That's all they do. That's a so, confirmed fact. So, as a point of like a budget for the payroll at Google. So Apple, we reward Facebook. we reward those companies. We clearly reward those companies in for accumulating the, our attention. In like the a, listed like marketplace for the success they have at doing something that you that we want to say they shouldn't be doing. Now you're talking. So we incent them through financial rewards to the management teams and everybody else through bonuses. Front of the class. Front of the class. Biggest bank account, biggest companies, you get your own airplane, anything. Front of the front of the class. And then when they can no longer fly under the radar. We have a problem. You gotta, go. you gotta go. This doesn't work. Can't help you. Doesn't that something sound wrong to with that? I mean, I would argue. Look at the Sacklers. They ran. No, that's very way. different. I knew you were going to bring up the Sacklers. Okay. And no, no, but I'm not, I'm not, I, again, not even that I fully buy into it, but the argument of this act of engineering through brain chemical. Timing, stimulation, gamification, whatever it all is with the clickety click and the GPS and the who, whatever the voodoo is. Right. And that's why it's, I'm not doing it because I can't just. No, it is it, not. It is not the same thing in my mind. It's not even close. And the, that is the point of dispute. Because you are trying to the, between illegal drugs and danger or shouldn't say illegal between illegal and or dangerous and or whatever it is on drugs that can murder you versus a line on of course. creativity, yeah, yeah, yeah. design, artistic, you know, artistic skills and, 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 and what you feel may be too much, too much, too heavy, too, too addictive. I don't really know. Like, no, that's not that's not about I'm not, I'm not saying that at all and I'm not comparing the outcomes and I'm not saying that the internet's not obviously laden with it is the sea of opportunity and liberation and communication and contact and creativity okay and 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 unequivocated I'm saying there's a budget item in the existing technology infrastructure that researches and has this has been going on for a long time and is just fully you know it's not a question that is mirroring the brain chemistry of a drug even if it's a different outcome so it's not smoking it's not fentanyl it's not heroin sure obviously. no 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 just a couple of balloons exploding but, but like I'm, some fireworks exploding on no, your no, screen no. to reinforce some, the decision what, no, no. you just made to watch something whatever i mean sure you know maybe it's that easy but the point is it's been sort of measured to death on what maintains engagement la 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 as attention turns into money, as a, as the lead asset of technology. And don't you think that like we have better things to do? Like like I, I'm not saying that. I mm. I'm saying that in the sense that like we're we're looking too hard for a problem that is not the biggest problem that we face. Like like we have so. You know, in order to okay, be okay. in order what's to be the, a great society, public? hold on. In order to be a great society, you have to um, you have to tackle the things you have to tackle the things that are clear and that are black and white. And there are certain things that are very gray, and there are certain things that are not only are they gray, they're also distracting. And in the process of that, because you label them as something that is that that is infecting a younger generation therefore you can justify it like if it was a bunch of old people nobody would give a crap but since it's young people that's the future all of a sudden that's there, there's there's some additional value to it and yet it's still gray and subjective and and it's not black and white and yet we by doing that 
we totally forget about the things that are black and white. Like, to me, that's the biggest problem with this. Like, we're sitting well, well, here. I, mean, no, no, I understand what you're saying. I we're understand. sitting here with a headline that's talking about, oh, man, this kid spends too much time on Facebook. OK. And that drives me nuts when we have, you know, a gun problem with school shooting. We have, you know, a migrant problem in big cities. We have we have attacks. We have so many issues at so many different places. We, you know, we, we have political uh, just a we, we have such a divergence in everything from, you know, things we believe in to the truth to everything else. It's just there's so many issues that we face as a society. Wars around the world and everything else. And we're worrying about, really, we're worrying about how much time a kid plays some game on Facebook and talk, talk, talk about that being destructive so to the future. I understand what you're saying. I mean, there's, there's only so many hours in a day. There's only so many issues no, no, you can only, tackle. But, there's, but the only discussion, where, 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 where you're running into an issue with your a summary, which is I largely agree with and was very effective, but still wrong was with your use of the words black and white. Because your view of black and white versus the next guy's view of black and white or the next gal's view of black and white versus what black and white even is, because black and white has been called into question because we can look at the same thing and see different colors. Really, can you look at the, can you look at the whole Sackler thing and the whole opioid crisis and really see that as gray? Can you look at the migrant issue as black and white? Um, no, that's a little more gray to me. It, maybe it's black and white that it's a problem, but it's not black and white what the solution is. That's correct. It's black and white that it's a problem. It's not black and white that there's a solution. And I think that's most of the biggies. And so I think the reason you end up back at Meta and Facebook back at, is because they're seen as intractable. No, so they're, they're seen... Cool they sets off on a sidebar just to look like there's to do something. And it's just, I agree that it's a distraction. No, the reason you can look at meta, the reason you look at meta is because they're, they're, they're too big not to hate. And that's what we are. We're like, they're, they, they, if they were a small little company, you, you wouldn't give it a second thought, but because it's meta they're they're you, you have, they're so big that you have to hate them. Okay. But 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 I don't even it's not you make it you sort of emotionally personalize it. I think it's inappropriate. I, I think that that part is true. I think that part is true that that is a provocation that all that on a primitive level, everybody likes to hate the big guy in any metaphor, literal or otherwise. Right. Yeah. Whether it's the whoever, the whoever. Right. The, and so I think that that's all valid. But at the same time, a setting the primitive aspects aside, capitalism, even in its purest, most you know, sort of rapacious, sort of unregulated form still has a component that is anti-monopoly or at least is anti-big. There's always some component of capitalism that is some me mechanism of gates for money and investment and banking and taxes and whatever to hire people. And then there's another piece that is if you get too big, you can only have so much of the market. You can only have 10% of the customers or 20% of the, there's an anti-monopoly component at its origin, which I think is appropriate for any of these big companies. But I just think that the selection of the children's attention is because it's relatable, because everybody has a, it's not because it's the biggest problem to answer your question, it's because everybody has or knows of themselves, they do it at any, at any age, by the way, that people target the so-called kids because it's easier to sort of stand on, but everybody has a screen problem as far as I can see. But, but the, thing, the thing that drives me crazy about this, Dylan, is no kids use Facebook. Facebook's no, like- No, that's, that's why I'm using it as a metaphor. No, 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 I know. But my point is that like, that's why this whole story, the Even origins of the story are such crap nothing. because every kid uses, you know, Snapchat or TikTok, TikTok or Instagram. They're not even using or as something else. Nobody uses Facebook except older people. That's why I don't. That's why it's but, such a joke to me. And that aspect, for it's sort of like this. That makes the whole question moot, so to speak, because even if you solve it, you've solved nothing because they were never even in that room. That's like exactly room. right. Like you just went into an empty, a famous empty room and changed the rules for the music in that room. And do no you know why? Do you know why Facebook is not putting up a fight? And they said, "Okay, we'll address this," because they know the room's empty. That's exactly right. 
That's exactly right. Facebook's like, saying it because understand? it's a free out for them. That's my whole point. That's the, that's the stupidity of this whole argument that, that's out there publicly is because Facebook already knows, okay, big deal. We don't even have anybody that does, like this doesn't even, this doesn't hurt us one bit. Nobody cares. They, already, they never were here. This is a bullshit made up store, right? That's the whole thing. It's like this headline. is a, exactly. like somebody wants a win, so give them a win. Now, oh my God, we sacrificed. Now we can we'll go hog wild on the other side. Everything whatever else, side, right? Whatever it is, that's the whole thing with Facebook. They, they're not if they if they if that affected their model, they would fight it to the to the death. But it doesn't. They don't care. It's an empty room. Exactly. The whole thing's theater. Yes, the whole no. Yes, the whole thing is it, it, it's, both, it's an easy give. Side. It's an easy give for them. But it's also a great headline for enforcement in a political in a political year. It's great we PR got, for for we, Facebook. We, got got them at the front of the news. Facebook wins DOJ or whoever they here. here it's a perfect example today. We're, as we're doing this show, as we are doing this show, Meta is up fourteen seventy five. Which is how many percent is that? What is the well, it's it's a it meta is a three. It's it's almost four percent today. Why? Because they said, OK, we're going to do this. Really? Yeah, because everybody knows it doesn't mean anything. See, the market is freaking genius. If the market thought, oh, my God, meta is making a concession and that's going to kill their bot, they're going to kill they're their bottom line. Meta, they finally got meta by the balls. They finally got. Yeah. And, and the answer no. is no, no, no. The market's. The, Meta didn't give up anything. They just got all this press, and they look like good guys for once. So the stock's up four percent. So you just made them another—I don't know. Let's see, four percent of a trillion dollars. You just made them forty billion dollars. Zuckerberg just says thank you very time. much. Just not a good time. Yeah. So and so. Now, like, and not only that, he has more clearance now to permit to do more criming, whatever that accounts. Which is my whole rate. point to why some of this stuff, some of this media stuff, the way they cover it, what they go after. It's it's all just a ruse. It's all just it's all just um, smoke and mirrors. It's just a game. They're playing a game in public to almost drive stock prices higher by creating something that's not even an issue, but that they make it seem like oh my god, it, it was a layup. We won, so everybody wins. Whoever whoever brought that up wins. Meta wins, and you know and wins. shareholders win. Better. Everybody wins on a totally made up thing. And that's why people would argue that the market is not efficient. And we're distracted. Now we're distracted and, from the real issues that are out there. Engaged from the actual list of first principles. So let's. So for our purposes, for and for our audience's purposes, the three first principles of attention, in your opinion, guns, cities, migrants. It's 2020. Forget the candidates. I mean, I've interviewed a gentleman, a nice gentleman for a bootstrapping that'll come out in the next week or two. He was telling me in Baltimore, 30 percent of the student population dropped out during the pandemic and has never been seen again. And that there's a lot of that. Um, we have an education issue, too. But if I was to put things in, you know, in 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 order. Um, be, yeah, I mean, those are fine. First principles, first principles. You know, I mean, we're in a very, we're in a good place right now. And so you have to kind of search for things to, to, to hate, search for things that are bad, but we're generally in a good place. I'm talking well, about the that, world. I think, well, obviously, I think the markets reflect that. Yeah, I mean, even the, mar when people are the markets reflect it, volatility reflects it. Um, central banks reflect it. The Fed reflects it. Everybody reflects that we're in we're in a pretty good place. I mean, yeah, there's you know a couple of ongoing wars and other things. There's bad things that always happen, but generally speaking, we're in a good place. We switch topics to culture and who the boss is and whether the players or the CEO matter because you brought this up I think last week <laughs> and I think that it's a never ending debate as to like is Jim Harbaugh worth a billion million dollars or is he worth one dollar? What about the quarterback and who is it? Is it the players or is it the boss? Yeah, I'd like to switch. Yeah, let's do it. And I like this topic and so it lets me tell an an, an old age old war story from my Bloomberg reporter days in which I was sent to Los Angeles to interview 
a man who at the time was the CEO of Disney when in sort of whatever, it must have been late 90s, early 2000s. Um, and it was about a program. Disney had done a program where you could rent the Disney way. So imagine you could rent, you could like, I could do a three day seminar as Dylan Radigan, entrepreneur of Nuco one, two, three, don't unrelated. And I could go to Tasty Trade and say, I want to rent your three day Tom Sosnoff's culture of success method of creating a startup culture. It was a culture class. How do you set the hierarchy? How do you interact? What's the sort of, and their point was, at first, the concern was, well, how could you take our culture, which is our most valuable asset, and sell it out to any fool that wants to pay you a few thousand dollars when the culture is actually our most defining asset? And then the other side of the argument was, if the CEO doesn't actually go to the cultural training event and isn't, isn't in attendance, but just some lieutenants with documents go, that it doesn't matter because even if they understand the culture, they can't implement the culture if the if the actual boss who sets the culture or the manager who sets the culture isn't present. It was an argument that the head coach's presence is extremely valuable because the head coach, Bill Parcells' presence to throw him back or pick Mike Dick as would be the ultimate, right? His presence alone changes the way everybody thinks and behaves, or Tom's presence alone changes the way everybody thinks and behaves, or Mike Bloomberg, or Elon Musk, or whatever. Who, you know, these are the most extreme. And then at the other end of it is, you know, San Antonio at its, you know, before Popovich became really legendary, but like the team wins and if everybody plays together and Team USA and all of that jazz. And I'm interested from your perspective as to how how scalable is culture and how and how do you make it the most relevant how do you make the head coach the most valuable and does it matter and what who decides how and how does that even happen i mean it's it's a great topic because it's been debated for a long time you know like and it's very difficult to quantify in a team sport and it's it's i think it's a little easier to quantify um I think it's a little easier to quantify in, in a public marketplace with a CEO because I think stock price tells a very important story. And I have... But you're saying culture equals multiple relative to the average for I'm your not saying basically. culture equals multiple, but I'm saying that competence equals multiple on the CEO level. I think there is a certain level of, of confidence and competence that is reflected in a stock price if the CEO would would Tesla be, you know, would Tesla be um, a stock priced at what it is, you know, a trillion dollar company today? If um, if uh, um, if if you know, if Elon Musk wasn't the CEO, would SpaceX be a two hundred billion dollar company if Elon Musk wasn't the CEO? Um, I, I do think that there is a reflection in the in the confidence. Um, of the CEO. So how does that relate to, from Mike Dicka to the Bears as the, so as the ultimate sort it, It's of very Mike. different. So from a corporate- as the Elon Musk of football, so to speak. Well, because a CEO can have a vision and then it's the job of everybody to execute that vision. In sports, it's different. In sports, the head coach, the manager, whatever it is, they can have a vision. They all have the same vision. They want to win the Super Bowl. They want to win the World Series. Everybody has the same vision. But their ability to execute that vision, because it relies on physical skills and the players themselves, it's very different. You can have the greatest vision in the world, but if you don't have people that can execute it, then you can't you can't win. Um, so, which brings you to your sort of Phil Jackson, Michael Jordan discussion. Ex exactly, it brings you to the yeah, the Phil Jackson, Michael Jordan, Phil Jackson, Shaq, Kobe. You know, it brings you it brings you to a more relevant discussion, which is, you know, Bill Belichick, Tom, Tom Brady, you, know, you win six Super Bowls, and Bill Belichick with his current team with Mac Jones, he's about to get fired. Or part. But I would say we're at, we're at but there's, I would say it's more similar than you give it credit for. Just I would just I'm just thinking back at my at the early days at Bloomberg, and the incumbent corporations were Reuters and Dow Jones, and they had been there for hundreds of years, and. 
Michael Bloomberg basically took the same model they have, which is charge a subscription to like to Wall to Wall Street professionals for information. One way and just alter the information and alter the sales experience. And he changed players because he, he had a totally different sure. sales force that was sure. 30 years old instead of 55 years old. Sure. It just come out of Cornell with MBAs and were hungry and they wanted to be running all over on their feet, literally all over New York City. Yeah, there, there, there are certain there are certain people different players. There are certain people that that player A will not run through a wall for, but that same player will run through a wall for for somebody else. And and that does happen. But in the world of of you know, moneyball, in the moneyball world and, and something that's quantifiable, um, I've seen studies that in a 162 game uh, baseball season, the the manager can can have an impact on up to three games, and on an 82 game um, season in basketball or hockey, the coach or the manager can have an impact in up to two and a half or three games total in the whole year. So the you're question, saying they they normalize every coach against every record against every everything everything and out, and, like, and and what no there's who the coach was and whatever all the well they, 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 this is professional they, sports college sports is different because there is there's an element of recruiting some coaches are better recruiters and things like that so there was that little different in college sports but um, but in professional sports you know. I mean, there's there's so many other variables, but the simple fact is that that coaches have they play, you know, a, a small role. If if all things are equal, it's you know whatever it is, two or three games. Um, but the other problem with it is, the coaches are the only ones you can actually fire, because all all contracts are essentially guaranteed. So it's very difficult to get rid of somebody in professional sports. So in order to make a change, which is sometimes nothing more then then you're doing it for you're doing it for reasons other than what that person the competence level of that person you're just making a change for the sake of making a change because it's, it's, you, well you're doing it you're doing it to demonstrate evidence of life because the you're only firing you a shot over the bow you are yeah. you are you are It'll basically be, sending a message the only gun you can shoot you're doing it for communications reasons with the fan base at the, at the end of the day yeah so somebody you know, somebody's got to go. Somebody's got to go, and he can't fire the players. What am I gonna do? I, I mean, wish I could I keep. Mean, they always say that 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 this is the only job in the world that you're hired to be fired. Like th this job is That's literally you're hired to be fired. Is, yeah, because it's such a pleasure. They also they like to fire a good prime minister in Europe, the same way where they just have instantaneous snap they'll pull. But head coaches are the only other job where like they're designed for a glorious firing. Yeah, I mean, in order to last for 10 years, 15 years, whatever it is, you know, like like a Mike Tomlin or a Belichick or something, you basically have to win every single season. And then at some point, you know, Belichick's about to get fired. They were talking about firing Mike Tomlin, which Fire I have him. no idea why they would even consider, you know, Andy Reid, he's safe, I'm sure. But, but I mean, I'm thinking about guys that have been around for like, you know, 10, 15 Decade. years. But even Andy Reid got fired from Philadelphia. You know, I mean, it happens. The the it, it's the only way out. I mean, is it the coach's fault? I mean, listen. Sometimes they lose the locker room, which I understand. And other which times, is culture, right? Who controls the culture? Is yes, the coach? they can lose the locker room. Buy into the culture. They lose yeah. the handle on culture. Yeah, guys are not willing to take a bullet for them. That's that's what happens. You know, they. they and then sometimes it's smarts or or you know or skill or, you know, their ability to call plays or manage, manage the clock, things like that. Strategy, strategy. Yeah. And, and sometimes, you know, it's just putting the right assistant coaches and stuff like that together. But man, you know, coaches take the fall and I think they have to, but for five or $10 million a year, it's okay. It's, That's, it's, it's, but, but, but I was, I'm just thinking about the era of the hired gun CEO that really works for the shareholder and the board. But as a as an employee, as opposed to as a sort of the super kingpin, super majority model that was created by the tech billionaires, where there's no longer the CEO is the king. There's no CEO who's the employee of the founders and the board on a hook that you can fire 
to it to to sort of gratify the shareholders. That adversarial component of CEO versus board and shareholders seems to have collapsed, at least in the culture, perhaps because of the poison pill on the legal side years and years ago. The hired gun CEO tends to be a fixer. It's usually almost always a fixer. Um, like Chainsaw Al. Remember Chainsaw Al Dunlap from like sure. 30 years ago? But there was, the there, I've known a couple of hired gun CEOs and they, they basically go in and fix up the, their whole goal. Uh, one guy that was on our board years ago, his name was Joe Whiteside. And um, he was an investor in Thinkorswim when we built it. And he was, a, um, I loved Joe. He was great. And his role was to go in and from company to company, he ran some of these 10, 20, $50 billion companies, huge, big banks and stuff, wherever they found like fraud or they found, or there was an issue, they'd hire this guy, give him a two year deal say, go in and clean it up and tell us when you're done. And when you're done, we'll bring in somebody else. And he would go in there and clean it up. He was freaking amazing. He blew my mind how good he was. And he just open a war room and just go to work. And he would open a war room and go to work. And I once spent, I flew to Australia with him once to, to, to a, a deal we were working on. And we, so we were on the plane together for like 20 some odd hours, you know, both ways for a couple days. And I just listened to that guy tell stories for, for literally two or three straight days on an airplane. I didn't sleep or anything. I just listened to him tell stories, like war stories about how he found these, you know, these, these companies were either stealing, how horribly they were run. Sure. And it blew my mind what was out there. I had no idea. And I'm like, this is what you do? He goes, it's the greatest job in the world. He goes, all I got to do is clean up somebody else's mess. I'm a fixer. He's the under, he's like the wolf, like Harvey Keitel in Pulp Fiction. Exactly, exactly. And they pay him, I don't know, five, $10 million, million dollars a, million a gig, dollars. move on to the next one. Yeah, millions of dollars. Blew my mind. But I'm not, I'm not thinking about, I mean, that I love, we all love that. That's like celebrating a quarterback, right? Like yeah. The, that's cool. But I'm thinking more in the lens of like, I mean, I guess the closest you would think now on sort of the really prominent, you could argue, although I just think I'm sure the governance is different, is, you know, Satya Nadella and Bill Gates or Jeff Bezos is out. I'm just saying there's a time when the CEO had a responsibility to someone in the way that a head coach has a responsibility to the fans, if nothing else, for his or her or his job. Whereas this, I feel like firing the CEO, like if you fire, I guess you saw it with Disney with the failed Bob Iger's a a catastrophic succession and then catastrophic return in terms of like, a, it's like a coaching disaster. And Disney's a very culture-based um, organization. I, so the coach I, matters more at a media company than at like a coat hanger factory. What's funny about that is that Disney is actually lower now than where it was when he and came Bob back. Bob was in there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know but, it's been a, it, 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 the, the, the most brilliant executive career in history with the worst finish ever to the point of being a butt of jokes on like cartoons. That's okay. You know what? I, I, I don't, that doesn't bother me. You know, neither like, me, but I know that the, I, I, I don't mind um, if you, if you if you're going to get all the accolades, then you're going to take all the risk, and you're getting paid for it. I'm totally fine with the whole process, including the pile on at the finish. Yep, I don't. You end up on top at bottom. That, that's why it's so hard to walk away on top. You know, I love people that well, walk away on top. It's always a limited time window. No matter how long you're on top, it's always by definition yeah. a limited time. And it doesn't matter top. whether you're a superstar athlete. You know. They all blow up, you know, Tiger Woods. Or the editor of a magazine in Chicago. Editor of a magazine, yeah, sure. The top is. Sure. You'll have a limited run. Sure. But but I think that, um, you know, getting back to the whole discussion, you know, is it right to fire the coach, essentially, is the question. And the answer is, yeah. Yeah. I would even say that it's fun to fire the coach. Yeah. And it's really fun to hire the coach. New coach, big thing in the paper, new culture. Everybody gets excited. Nobody takes a job as a coach thinking it's a lifetime job. Nobody. But do, I, do you think CEOs think of it the same way? No, I think, that, yes, I do. No, I think CEOs believe that it's theirs to lose. They're set for life, just don't fuck it up. 
excuse my language. I, I think that is the way CEOs think. It's it's a much longer. I think coaches think I just got to. I'm only as good as my last game, as my last year, whatever it is, and I got to keep this alive. But don't unpack your bags, honey. Don't unpack the suitcases and the boxes because we're probably going to be moving furniture. again. There's furniture already in that house. It's That's fine. right. But I think CEOs do think differently. And do you think that that's a change over from? I, 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 has it always been that way? Have CEOs always thought differently than head coaches from when you were DH or uh, DLJ? Every to, CEO that I've ever known that got that got let go or fired, and I've known a couple of publicly traded companies, not not a lot, maybe less than ten. Every single one was shocked. 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 Mm. I don't think there's a single professional coach of a football team or a baseball team or basketball team that is quote shocked when they get fired. Like I just don't think that's the case. I don't I think they're you know the writings on the wall, they're listening to it on sports radio, they're listening they're reading about it. I think they know that something's there. I think that every CEO that I've ever talked to that got fired is in absolute shock that they got but they can't believe it. Because they, they, they're like, they're, because they're operating, which, I mean, this is a different podcast, but it reminds me, we used to host Carl Icahn years ago for these long discussions, and there's all sorts of, I'm not making a reference to me either way, but his narrative was always that the CEO specifically, systematically, is has incentives for the wrong decisions as a base operation, because the entire incentive system for the people that are the five most powerful people at any publicly traded company, whatever that mix is, head of sales, head of marketing, CEO, COO, CFO, changes from company to company, is not to fuck it up. The incentive is not to create. The incentive is to preserve, which again, I know we've run the clock, yeah. but as opposed to the, the head coach's incentive is you better be performing. You have to keep taking shots because if you don't win, you're going to get fired anyway. They think the firing is more of a certainty for non-performance, whereas you can sort of skate by with some lukewarm performance in the corporate world just by um, not deviating. I, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. 100%. That was his Carl's biggest complaint. He's like the wrong people. He's like, if you're a shareholder, you want growth. If you have, a, if you're a manager, you just I, don't I, want. To I totally up. agree with Carl Icahn. And he's like, that is the core of the entire problem with America: is the re relationship between capital and the incentives for management to not. I've, I've given that discussion. I've given a lecture on our our our. We have a, this over willingness to accept mediocrity drives me out of my mind. It, 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 in favor of I didn't F it up. That's why you sleep well that night. Yes, it was more mediocre, but nothing bad happened today. We'll keep at him tomorrow. Yeah. Where a head coach would never think that. He's Dylan Radigan. I'm Tom Sosnoff. This is Truth or Skepticism. We do this every Wednesday at uh, 1 p.m. Central Time. Have a great week, Dylan. Bye. Goodbye.